So, what up, y'all? This is Mikey from uh, Canada Rye Bowls. Now, I am really excited to be doing this video today, you guys. Um, it's uh, it's going to be the first official Mil Sig slash Valkin uh, M17 A2 video we've done on our channel, Canada Rye Balls. You can check us out at uh, YouTube, also Instagram and Facebook. So, uh, before we get into everything in this uh in this video, we're going to do a couple of demos. I'm going to talk about the build. I'm going to talk about what you have to do to get that higher FPS. Now, really quickly, yesterday I put up a uh, video on our channel, Canada Rye Balls. So um, I was chronographing the last 1,000 PSI left in my Ninja bottle, and the average I was getting was 295 uh, FPS with the 9.9 gram round ball rye ball. So for you guys that don't know, the 9.9 gram round ball rye ball is a 9.9 to 10.2 uh, nylon PVC with a glass uh, gloss composite. Now there's no seams and there's a steel ball bearing in the middle. So this projectile, I would say weighs 10 grams, but I like calling it the 9.9. So with the uh, M17A2 and the couple mods that we've done, this exact build with the uh, first strike mock suppressor that I use is getting me with a uh, full bottle, a bottle that you know has more than a uh, half in it, uh, an average of 305 FPS. So depending on the uh, bottle, it's gonna be anywhere from 395, or sorry, 295 to 305 FPS. So. I am getting an average of 42 to 44 joules with this monster right here, okay? Now, um, this thing is actually super efficient. Um, it's doing a lot better than I ever thought. Um, if you guys you know, watch our channel, we do mostly focus on uh, First Strike FSC for uh, home defense. I do have some videos with the T15. Now we're gonna be starting with the Milsig and Falcon. So hopefully, you know, it's gonna be a great series with this guy. I'm already super impressed. So, um, you know, let's quickly go into the, the quickly talk about the uh, marker itself, and then we'll just start popping up some uh, demos, okay? So first things first, now when, when I, sorry guys, <laughs> when I uh, first got this thing stock, okay, you know what? Okay, sorry guys, I'm just a little too excited. Let's just start with the whole entire build. So this is our Milsig Falcon M17A2, okay? I got this thing brand new. Uh, it was a ridiculously good price. I paid $333 for it, brand new, okay? Uh, the FSC starts about 550 before you put anything to it. The T15, it depends on what build you get, starts about 1000 So uh, it is a very, very reasonable price. Okay, so unfortunately I didn't chrono any uh, numbers with the stock barrel. Okay, I don't suggest using the stock barrel at all. Um, if you do get a barrel, so um, it is better to match up your projectile bore with your barrel bore. So for example, I'm using a Lapco Tipex 0.683 8 inch uh, rifled barrel. Okay, now the reason I'm using a 683 is because my projectiles, the 9.9 gram round ball rye balls, they are a 0.683 and they're a round ball. So when you're using a round ball, you can match up uh, a 683 to a 683 and you have no problems. If you're using a shape projectile, um, I wouldn't recommend, um, I wouldn't recommend, you know, using a barrel that's a 683. If your shape projectiles are a 683, if your shape projectiles are a 683, I would use a 684 or I'd probably, you know, most likely use a 685. But past that, now I have a lot of customers who like using stock barrels, who don't want to go buy another barrel after they buy these projectiles. And you know what? It's okay. So uh, just a quick example, when I'm using my FSC, uh, I have a nine inch barrel that's a 683 and I have a nine inch barrel that's a 685. When I'm using the 9.9 gram round ball rye balls with my FSC that's tuned for less lethal, uh, with the nine inch 683, I get an average of 345 FPS. With the uh, nine inch that's a 685, I'm getting an average of 337 to about 339 FPS. So as you guys can see, it's a plus minus about five FPS. Um, when you're averaging all the shots. So of course it is better to match your projectile bore with your barrel bore, but it's not a 100% must. Okay, so I just wanted to quickly 
uh, get that down. And another thing, I've been seeing a lot of less lethal videos online, you guys, which is great. I love uh, people putting up videos. You know, this community is growing more and more every day and it's love to pick up new, and I love picking up, you know, new things. But when you, you have to average your shots. So when I say this guy is giving me an average of 42 to 44 joules, okay, when I'm, you know, taking shots with the chronograph, when this bottle is more than half, I'm getting 298, 300, 302, 298, 300, 303. It stays in between the 295 and 305 range. It doesn't go any lower than that and it doesn't go any higher than that. I've been seeing videos where, you know, uh, the guy's shooting his first 20 shots, he's getting 22 to about 32 joules, and he gets one shot at 50 joules, you can't say that your marker is firing at 50 joules. So it's always best to do the uh, average, and um, you know, you gotta always know the weight of your projectile. You know, once again, uh, you know, if, if I put a 1.8 gram uh, round ball, round ball on this thing and you know this guy with a 10 gram projectile is giving me 42 joules with that 1.8 uh with that 1.8 gram projectile you know the fps might be double double and a half but it's not going to give me the same power or the same stopping power as that 10 gram ball so always know the weight of the ball when you guys are looking at specs and you know just don't believe everything you, you know you, you guys uh, see online so just a, just a quick thing I want to get off my chest. So now let's talk about this build. So this M17A2, like I just said, the first thing I did was uh, got myself a Lapco Tipex barrel. So you can use A5 barrels and you can use Tipex barrels with the uh, M17A2. It, uh, the difference is compared to you know, an FSC barrel, they don't lock in place, they just have uh, threads and you just thread it in. So uh, that's that. Now the uh, 305 FPS average that I'm getting with the 9.9 .9 gram, that's with the eight inch Lapco barrel plus my first strike, I think it's 5.5 to six inches mock suppressor. So my mock suppressor threads on, okay? It's kind of like getting, you know, an extension for your barrel, but I haven't chronoed the, uh, the Lapco barrel by itself. So I've, every time I've chronoed it, it's with the uh, mock suppressor attached. So, you know, obviously when I take the mock suppressor off, I'm gonna get a difference in FPS. It shouldn't be anything too drastic, probably about, you know, two to maybe max seven FPS difference, but I would have to chrono that to uh, to see. Now, as you guys can see, I got some uh, flip up sights, you know, normal flip up sights. I got a uh, holographic uh, uh, sight right here. I, even though, you know, I like using my flip ups the best, I got something for my strap. Now, when it comes to the shroud and handguard, so let me, let me come up here, you guys. So when you get this M17A2 stock, it's gonna come with, uh, I don't know exactly what it is, but to me it felt like a plastic shroud or handguard. So what I ended up doing, first I bought that MCS adapter that lets you use any uh, handguard or, or shroud. The only issue with that is I tried a couple different ones. I even tried the Fusion one that MCS said it was for the M17. Uh, I tried a F first strike one. I tried a bunch of different ones, but what's gonna happen is, you know, your rail's not going to line up when you use that different shroud. So what I end up doing is just going with the uh, MCS M17. I think it's also called a uh, Grizzin, if I'm saying that right, Grizzin shroud. So it came with two pieces. Um, I wanted to keep it small. So that's the shroud you see there. Got a couple first strike uh, two inch rails. I got an angled uh, foregrip here. As you can see the strap, I'm using the stock mag. And um, so the most important thing, this, sorry guys, it's so sunny, I can't see anything. This is my, um, this is my set screw mod that I end up doing. So the difference was when I was using this exact same setup, this M17 would max out at 250 FPS until I did this set screw mod. So what you gotta do is you gotta take this whole entire piece out. Now there'll be another set screw here. Okay, this isn't the stock one. And then that one, uh, there's a hole in the middle. Okay, the difference is this one plugs up, uh, you know, plugs up the hole. So you do need plumber's tape and you do need this set screw. So this set screw is an eight times 1.25 times eight uh, set screw. It also works with an eight times 1.25 times, oh, 1.25 times 10. So it's actually super simple. You know, you get a set of pliers or whatever. You take this out, this whole entire piece. Okay, you take this whole entire piece out. 
Now there'll be a spring and uh, another set screw in there. You drop those two out, you put the new set screw, okay? Uh, you put the tape and you just go down clockwise till you know it feels like it sits in. Don't make this, when you tighten this uh, piece, sorry, I don't know what it's called. When you tighten this whole entire piece, there is an O-ring that sits under there. So make sure you don't lose it and make sure you don't tighten it too hard where it's gonna affect that O-ring. Now, um, another huge thing when it comes to this M17 is I am using a uh, 13CI Ninja tank, but it has an SHP regulator. So SHP is super high pressure. Now the difference with super high pressure stock, I'm getting uh, 1100 PSI output. And uh, let's say if I was using a first strike tank, the ones I have, they're uh, about 850. So um, I would say, the aftermarket barrel the uh set screw mod and the uh 1100 psi tank are probably the key uh ingredients to get your m17 at higher fps and if you guys can see my uh velocity sorry guys if you guys can see my uh velocity right here from stock i probably went hmm, probably a full clockwise and maybe one fourth turn but you guys can see um you know how far that velocity screw has gone in uh with the m17 i wouldn't suggest doing you know full clockwise turns or you know even half uh turns i was doing one fourth and one eighth clockwise turns so i would chrono it then i would do uh one fourth or one eighth chrono it one fourth one eighth and then also this m17 i wouldn't suggest you know, if you take a shot, chrono it, and then just flip it around, put your Allen key to bring up the velocity, I would turn it off. So as you guys can see, I'm using a ASA, Valken ASA on off. So when I fire, okay, I chrono it. Um, if I wanna, you know, bring it up or down, I'm gonna close it. I'm gonna fire it till the, all that air comes out. You'll feel that bolt go back forward. Then adjust your velocity, okay, one eighth, one fourth, and then turn it back on, chrono it, you know keep going keep going definitely don't uh, be playing with that velocity screw when it is aired up but once again you know there's not too much when it comes to this m17 compared to something like a t15 when you're trying to use it for less lethal uh, basically barrel match up your projectile board if you can um, the uh, set screw mod and a tank that's pushing at least 1100 psi uh, i would not go over 1100 i've never gone over and um, when you are using a tank that has 1100 psi output pressure let's say prior you were using an 850 psi uh, tank now if your velocity is set to that 850 psi before you use the new 1100 psi tank i would bring that velocity back down to almost about stock because the last thing you want to do is have your marker maxed out um, on the setting with the 850 tank and then just put in that 1100 tank you're, you're going to run into issues this thing is actually really reliable if you take care of it and if you, you know, do all the steps I'm talking about slowly. Don't rush into it. This guy does not like being rushed. So take your time and uh, really, you know, kind of focus. And you'll get the results you want. Now, uh, one last quick thing I was about to say. Oh, these uh, Ninja Tanks, they are a little bit bigger. None of my 13CI stocks fit on it, but uh, I'll find one. That's why, you know, it's kind of hanging out like this. Usually I have the uh, Vector uh, stock from... Um, make fit maker so so yeah so that's the build 305 fps average 42 to 44 joules now i can get this guy up um a little bit more if if i really wanted to um i think the very very max i got was about 315 fps just under uh, 50 joules but it was way too hard on the marker itself and the bolt so i ended up bringing it back down and i found a very very comfortable spot at 305 fps with the 9.9 gram round ball rye ball, which is giving me about 43, 44 joules, and I'm absolutely loving the results. So um, now let's, uh, you know, let's get into some demos. So first things first, I wanna see the uh, grouping, the accuracy, and obviously I wanna see the uh, stopping power. This is something that we use on a, a bunch of our, uh, you know, videos on our channel to, you know, kind of see the stopping power and to kind of see the grouping and accuracy of the uh, marker and the projectiles. So we're gonna be using this one third plywood. I'm gonna start at 25 feet, okay? With the uh, M17 at 305 FPS with a 9.9 gram round ball rye ball. So uh, we'll see the results that we get. We'll move on to a couple more. We'll do some of the tests of the four gram. 
Unfortunately, I haven't got a chance to chrono the uh, four gram yet. I honestly got everything uh, that I needed for this, not even yesterday, and I've just completely been rushing it. So we will do some more videos on the M17. I just kind of want to, you know, get uh, a base out there and, and get it started, but I'm really excited to see the results. So uh, let's start with this one third plywood and uh, see what she does. So the very first video, I'm gonna go back to about 25 feet, okay, using the 9.9 gram round ball riot ball and the uh, M17. So I'm getting an average 305 FPS, about 43 joules. Let's see the uh, results it does with the uh, one third plywood at 20, 25 feet. Okay, you guys, so that was uh, 25 feet. <laughs> I don't think it had absolutely any problems ripping right through that plywood. Yeah, absolutely no problems. So for like a precedent test that um, gave us some pretty good results, <laughs> this thing's an animal. Don't forget you guys, this thing holds uh, 20. So unlike the uh, FSC that holds eight, you know, that's roughly the same power, this thing holds 20. Oh, some crazy results. Okay, let's move to the next test. Okay, you guys, so, since we got some pretty uh, crazy results with the 9.9 uh, .9 gram and the one third plywood, unfortunately, the uh, M17 eats a lot of air. So that first bottle I have is done. Now I only have another bottle that's halfway, uh, left full so i'm just gonna jump to this video uh quick and uh, we'll do some more videos but unfortunately for today this is gonna be the last demo now this watermelon is absolutely huge i don't know if you guys can see okay i'm just under six feet about 220 pounds so i'm not that small but this is a massive watermelon okay i just bought it it's not a uh, rotten or anything like some videos i've seen okay so we're gonna do it again. I'm gonna go back to 30 feet using the 9.9 uh, .9 gram and the M17. I just wanna show you a quick little trick I use to uh, load my uh, projectiles with a box mix. So what I like to do is bring it down just a couple spins at the beginning, okay? And then, uh, one second, yes, sorry. Okay, then you know, I put about one, two, three, or, so as you can see, it's at the top. So now I go back down a couple spins. And again, one, that's five, six, seven, eight. So you can see once again, it's at the top. Bring it back down, nine, 10, 11. Once again, it's at the top, 12, 13, oops. 15 16 17 18 19 okay so that's 19 now what i like to do here it won't work with 19 the way i'm going to show you guys so what i like to do 
Okay, I see that how there's a little bit of gap. I like to put my finger at the top, click the release. Okay, now the balls come back up to the top. Now you're just gonna, this is already tight. You're gonna go until it just tightens, no resistance. Okay, and then it's ready to go. I have no problems when I load uh, my box make like that. So we're gonna go back to about 30 feet with the 9.9 .9 gram round ball ride ball. Uh, with an average of 305, about 43, 44 joules with the M17A2. Let's see what this monster does against this massive, oh, I would say the front of it. I'd say this guy is at least, at least, at least, I would say about 10 to 12 inches. So let's see what, let's see what happens. Okay, you guys. I'm gonna go back to about 30 feet, 9.9 .9 gram, 305 FPS average, 43, 44 joules, M17. Let's see what she does. Okay, you guys, so check this out. 30 feet, first shot even, right through. All the way right through, like literally. Eat the whole, oh, man, I'm trying to show this. Eat the whole entire watermelon. Ripped right through, no problems. <laughs> That's insane, you guys. This thing is an absolute monster. Check this out. And I could hear it just colliding against the fence. The fence is another like 20 feet behind us. Look at that, you guys. Just ate it. Oh, man. No sick Valken just fucking, oh, sorry, just blowing me away right now. This is a great start to a new era for Canada Right Balls. Now, I'm gonna see if I can get one more demo out of this. Okay, you guys, so there's just 1,000 PSI left in my last bottle. Uh, sorry, I didn't think this guy ate so much uh, air. I'm basically getting two megs out of a 13 CI uh, uh, HPA tank, but uh, I'm, I'm blown away with these results. So let's go back to 40 feet with the 9.9 .9 gram uh, round ball ride ball, 305 FPS. But since the bottle is basically done, it's gonna be like that chronograph video I put up yesterday. So it's gonna be more of an average of 290, 295, which is still, um, I believe 39, 40 joules. So, uh, 
let's uh let's let's see uh this last demo and uh welcome to the mill cigar i'll say that with the 9.9 gram Alrighty, y'all. Thanks for uh, watching the video. It just rips through every single time. That is insane. You guys look. Every single shot. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Check us out at www.canadareyeballs.com. Stay in tune for uh, new, more videos coming out. Thanks for watching.